Hi, everybody. Um, my name is uh, Dr. Jay Frankel. I'm the department head and R. Myers Endowed Professor in the Mechanical and Aerospace Engineering Department. And um, I, I, I'm here to give you basically a quick overview of the department and address any of the questions. And if I can't address the questions, I will uh, take notes and find someone who can. I'm relatively new here, so bear with me on, on the slides. I came one year ago, uh, and then COVID came one month later. So I basically was in my office one month. Um, so uh, let me go through the slides and, and, and try to address some of your questions. OK. OK, so New Mexico State University is a land and space grant university uh, that is designated as an Hispanic serving institution, an HSI or an MSI. Uh, we basically have the only AE program in New Mexico uh, that's accredited, and it offers a bachelor's degree, master's degree, and PhD degree, a term of degree. Um, this is very important because this is the only AE program in the state of New Mexico. Uh, we also have a mechanical engineering program, and other universities in the state have that. But, so we are a combined department, which is not unusual. Uh, where I came from, I spent most of my career at University of Tennessee. It was mechanical, aerospace, and biomedical engineering. OK, I'll just give you an overview of the faculty and the construction of the department and some of our activities. Um, I'm going to go over on the left side of your screen at this point uh, the rank of the faculty member going downward. Please note that the chancellor is a member of our faculty. And that is quite unique because that means he speaks our language, uh, you know, mechanical and aerospace engineering. Uh, his advisor and I almost met to work on a project together. It was very interesting. Um, so it's very interesting to have the chancellor in our department. I sometimes wonder if I'm the boss for those few moments, but I'm not sure. Uh, anyway, so I'll go over that. But on the right-hand side, you'll see a fact sheet. And the fact sheet shows up on our website. And the fact sheet is actually a very interesting page to look at. We added it since I came here, because it does give you an idea of the whole department's makeup in terms of degrees, mechanical versus aero, um, and the faculty ranks. And so you can see the way it's distributed. Uh, if you look here in the orange box, you see that we have 178 dual majors. Where I came from, we had very few dual majors. So that's a very interesting thing. And it basically takes about an extra semester. And I'll return to that. You'll see that we are located in Jet Hall, which is that building there. Um, you'll also see that we have three major uh, clubs, if you like, our activities. One is the uh, Rocketry Club. It's called the Atomic Aggies. And the advisor is Dr. Shu. And you see in YouTube uh, connection. I would recommend you, you, know, you investigate these connections. They're very well made videos. And they show you the activity and the excitement. Uh, so you see the Rocketry Club, and they have an annual competition. You see the AIAA Design Build Phi, which is an annual competition. And let me just admit this one student. Um, you'll see that the mini Baja exists. And that is actually mostly mechanical engineering, but uh, it is through the um, uh, Society of Automotive Engineers, SAE, which is not in our department. I believe that's in the chemical engineering department for some odd reason. Going to the left in that chart, you see the way the faculty made up uh, in a moment. But first, you see the that we basically right now have a population of about 21 master's degree students and uh, 27 PhD in mechanical. And then you see an arrow, eight masters, and roughly five PhDs in arrow. Uh, but you see, if you look again at the undergraduate, this is a very fairly large class. I think if you add up those numbers, it's over 700 students in our department, which is the largest department in, uh, uh, second largest, I think, at the university. It's certainly, I think, the largest in our college. Um, you'll see that we have a National Academy member, which is our chancellor, and uh, that's a big deal if you're an engineer. Uh, we, have four, we have four professorships uh, in the department. I have one of them. Uh, you'll see that the associate department, Dr. Shu, he actually is an, a recent uh, award-winning 
we recently re received this award as a, at a professorship. You see that we have eight associates and uh, five assistants. So you see a very well distribution, a good distribution of the faculties, which I think is very good. You see that the faculty publishes a lot. So that means we keep up the state of the art, uh, which means that your classes also have that component in it. The faculty members are keeping up. Uh, let's see, I, I think I'll go for the next one. Uh, so anyway, you see the professors in the department and you see the, the uh, leadership structure. Okay, we have a lot of associate professors, as I know, it was about eight. And you see that the, uh, we have eight on our left, and you see the assistant professors on the right. And these are relatively new faculty members, and they are seeking tenure and promotion in a five to seven year time frame. Okay, mechanical and aerospace, aerospace engineering, I just want to tell you some of the things that we do. Uh, of course, we do automotive internal combustion engines and electric motors, which are much more popular in, in you know, now. Uh, designed uh, power producing machines. Manufacturing materials is a very interesting area. Power plants is a classic area. Air conditioning, refrigeration, appliances. I, I just look at Procter & Gamble, it's a huge company. Uh, we do in air, more in the aero. We do drones for military agriculture and other applications. We aero people design aircraft, spacecraft, satellites, and missiles. And we're more recently very involved with hypersonics for offensive and defensive purposes. Hypersonics means basically five times the speed of sound or greater. And for example, the shuttle we, you know, was flying when it came back in about Mach 28. Uh, let's see what else. Uh, advanced testing and evaluation. We're also very interested in doing that. Uh, a unique thing to New Mexico State University is the PSL, the Physical Science Laboratory. Uh, they have a, a program called CREW, where some of the undergraduates work there, and they, and they work toward getting a basically a classified rating, either, I think it's a DOD rating, so it's secret, while they're an undergraduate. And that helps your um, professional growth when you leave here. Another thing we should note uh, that's very important is that mechanical and aerospace engineering are very similar. My PhD is in mechanical engineering, but I do aerospace engineering. So just to keep that in mind, and vice versa, by the way, you can get a degree in aerospace engineering and be a very good mechanical engineer. Uh, flow charts, just to give you an idea, this department and this college is very, very good at helping you path the, the minimum time for graduation. I think that's very important. Now, normally that's always very difficult to achieve in four years as an engineer but uh, it's possible if you follow the flow chart. So you basically need to enter in the correct way. If you enter in the correct way, which is based on the math, you, will be, you could potentially get out in four years. So keep in mind, the math is really a critical thing. Whether you're high school or college, you really need to stay on track for the math and you really need to be um, good at math in my view. I mean, that's what I was always told. If you like math, be an engineer. <laughs> that's what they told us. Um, again, we have another flow chart here for aerospace engineering. And just go back here for a moment. If you look at the first two years of mechanical and the first two years of aero, they're basically the same, okay? So your decision point is not necessarily coming in. It could be basically sophomore year. Okay, that's one thing one needs to keep in mind. And so the, the aerospace path is a little bit different, but similar. And then if you want a dual degree, you'll see that the number of semesters, basically if you stay on track, it's only one extra semester to get two bachelor's degrees. And I think that's quite interesting here. Uh, the second thing we have we'll talk about later is basically as you as do your undergraduate, you can also start your master's degree program at the same time. And that also accelerates things. Undergraduate student activities, and I had alluded to this earlier, uh, the Atomic Aggies, which is the uh, rocketry club. And they actually, um, you know, this year in the COVID, the, the um, competition was not held, but we still launched the flights uh, out of the spaceport. They were very, very nice to work with us on this thing. And uh, the student uh, representatives for this project 
pushed it through and they got their flights. Both rockets went up successfully and landed in one piece. <laughs> so that was good. Um, let's see. Design, build, fly, I mentioned before. Uh, and you, you get involved with basically some aircraft design. Uh, the Atomic Aggies, again, is a rocketry club. So they, they work with uh, pretty, um, you know, chemical rockets. It's, it's, it's quite interesting. The mini Baja competition, which is something that most of the universities have. We have two, and it's basically off-road vehicles. And, uh, and there's some constraints in the club when I mean, you do the national competition. For example, when I wrote down here, they all have the same engines. Okay, so again, if you look, if you click on these various buttons, which are on our web page on the fact sheet, you get some very nice videos. Okay, now I bring up research because I'm new here and where I come from, we try to promote undergraduate research. And here they do that too. So I, I feel comfortable about presenting these slides. The, the Department of Mechanical and Aerospace Engineering in a broad sense can be seen in these four boxes. Uh, I'm not saying that is the best representation, but it is a common representation. And you see that we have thermal fluid sciences, robotics, which you know, autonomous systems and mechatronics. And you see dynamics, vibrations, controls, and solid mechanics materials. This is a, a conventional grouping uh, of, um, of areas. Uh, in the thermal fluid sciences, you know, I added some, again, if you look at hypersonics in the undergraduate and graduate level, that's probably a more recent entry even though hypersonics has been around for more than 50 years. Uh, this is the area I work with, so I'm more knowledgeable in that area. So I'm not trying to bias you, but this is where I'm more knowledgeable. Uh, we do try to have research opportunities for the undergraduate and certainly the graduate students. The undergraduates, we try to have them work in our labs and we pay. And you, you get to see the uh, hierarchical type of view of working together. You know, your, your undergraduate, your graduate student, a postdoc, and a professor. When you take your classes, you always see the peers. So if this is a very unique opportunity to see a, a view slightly different than normal, uh, plus you're paid. And basically, the faculty members use this opportunity to try to recruit a graduate student. So they work with you, and they see your talent, and they're going to ask you to stay on. But this is basically going back to what I showed earlier was, you know, refrigeration, this and that. This starts going down into the level below it, not the product, but the sciences. So this is what we do here. This is what our faculty are experts in. Like I said, I already have 17 slides, so I'll try to wrap it up some questions or if there's another speaker. Uh, the AEME vision, uh, GIF is me, I'm the new department head. Um, and this is my vision for here. First of all, be before I go too far, communication is very important as we learned from COVID. Um, a, a, a department that communicates is a happy department. And so what we're coming out with is a newsletter that we will hopefully come out the first issue July of this year. It's gonna be called the Aggie Knot. I'm very sure nobody has a newsletter called the Aggie Knot. Um, and it would be two issues a year, and it's, it's going to have student events in there, student activities, faculty events, faculty activities, and it should keep you up, up, uh, up to date, you know, go, of course, it's behind in time, uh, but this is very important. I'm sorry about that. Let me turn this off. Let's see. Uh, we have extensive community uh, uh, tutoring opportunities. Uh, there is a learning community at this university, and there's tutors, and of course, the faculty and graduate students. We're going to be hiring two additional faculty in, in the near future. We are defining our aerospace thrust areas as hypersonics and autonomous vehicles, drones. And it doesn't have to be drones as you think of at low speeds, like for agricultural, looking at the land, water, and the quality of the plant. Uh, or somebody delivering a package to your house by a drone or whatever, uh, autonomous vehicles can actually be even at hypersonic speeds. Uh, and you think of it a different, different way. We are actually looking at million dollar activities so we can hire more undergraduates and graduate students. We certainly want to increase our graduate courses. 
and some of you seniors could be taking these courses, if, you know, under a technical elective. Uh, and that could be, you know, again, when you increase the graduate uh, teaching uh, activities, or new courses, they, the new courses tend to be modern courses, something of contemporary interest and importance to you. Uh, like I said, hypersonics today is not the same as hypersonics uh, education 50 years ago. Uh, let's see, uh, I want to increase the internal scholarships. I'm going to be starting a new fundraising effort to provide uh, scholarships for needy students and, and uh, for travel. Uh, these, the, this is a fundraising effort we're going to start and hopefully the first issue. Um, and this funding will all go back to the student and nothing and nowhere else. Uh, I'd like to expand the uh, research and increase uh, and increasing facility holdings. For example, I'm hopefully going to be putting together a 1.5 kilowatt grade laser for heat as a heating source. This is a fairly large laser and it would be very useful for our experiments and undergraduates who learn. Well, hopefully we'll be getting some a shock tube for Mach 15 flows potentially uh, in, in, in hopefully this summer. Uh, I'm working on that. Uh, we're going to increase our undergraduate involvement in research. This is, again, what I feel is important. Uh, we'll increase regional and national collaborations in large projects. This is also very important that, you know, we may not have a big test facility here in some area, but a, a neighboring university may. It'd be nice if we had a connection to them so students can visit and participate in large scale experiments. This is something I, I like to see occur. Not nor it's not normal normally performed at many other universities. Again, if you have a good uh, so, uh, solid uh, uh, donations that are being accumulated, we can pay for the travel. These are very, very important things. So a lot of things are changing here. We like to increase our archival publications. Many of my undergraduates have publications. Some of my undergraduates that worked for me have gone to MIT, Carnegie Mellon, Mellon Ber Berkeley, Caltech. Uh, the last speaker we had here last week was uh, Dr. Tari, associate professor at UCLA, very famous guy. He worked in my lab as an undergraduate. He was highly recruited by Caltech coming out of my lab. Um, let's see, I'd like to increase engagement with aerospace and mechanical industries. In fact, I'm looking to add, I'm, I'm talking to two companies now about internships trying to increase our holdings. One's in uh, California, one's in New York. So uh, we, we have, I think, some of these things, activities going on already, but I'd like to increase them because I know a lot of people and a lot of companies. So I think this is a very good time to have an internship because I think you'll get, you're going to get an, uh, the other side of the coin, you know, when you leave the university, what, what you could be doing. These internships, by the way, and I, I'm sure uh, Ms. Burns, or Ms. Lester will talk about this. Uh, there is a platform called Handshake, and this includes, uh, connects the employees to the students, and you should be looking at that. Uh, uh, Ms. Burns uh, can share information with students on how to engage with uh, the uh, annual, the biannual um, career fairs. Uh, there's a lot of things that this university offers to students that's unique, and uh, I'm I'm very very pleased to see this. Um, it's a very personal touch, by the way, I think. Uh, research opportunities uh, and funding. Uh, we work in a small group of graduate students, postdoc and faculty. Again, I talked about the hierarchy of education versus the peer education. The environment is unique and creative. And it, it's an opportunity to build credentials, whether you want to go to industry or go on to graduate school. Like I said, here's an example of my students. Uh, 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 Kevin Matthew, he, he went on uh, his master's degree and works for GM in Detroit. Uh, the other one below is uh, Chapel Rice. He's a graduate student and he's trying to decide what to do, but he's in a brilliant young man and, and he's working on a paper now. Even why is that University of Tennessee? I'm very sorry, I thought I turned it off. Anyway, um, and then there's conference papers. So. It's a very unique opportunity. You do get something out of it, a writing experience, a, um, you know, that's unique. You do get to do experiments and uh, other things that most students don't get to do. Okay, let's see where I'm at, 13. 
Okay, why am I not here? I can go back here. 14. The value. Uh, I think there's a very good value in New Mexico State. I think it's ranked very highly on value. And I think Ms. Lester will probably be marked on that, or will. Uh, there's a lot of internships, co-op opportunities. I know there's a lot of internships, a lot of networking. Uh, yes, Mechanical and Air offered internships or co-op positions here. And I, as again, as I mentioned, I'm trying to help expand that, uh, at least the internship opportunities. The job market is strong. Uh, the double major option is very unique. I think that for one extra semester, it provides you two degrees and more flexibility. The retention of our students is important to us and assistance is available. And we have an accelerated master's program for those students who really want to go on to, uh, to get a little more education before they leave. Uh, we also offer internal grants. This is something I started last year, my first semester here. There are some online short courses, and this is an example. Again, my area is hypersonics. Um, and so what I did was I found a short course on hypersonic vehicle design performance. Uh, four students, I offered, I offered, I sent out an email. Four students decided to take it. Uh, and let me just say, tell you about this, this AIAA course. Uh, I think it cost me, it cost the department $2,000, well worth it, for these four students. They got to meet uh, Dr. Frank Liu, who's world famous in shock tubes. Dr. Lou de Magdalani is world famous. Uh, Dr. Kevin Bocut, world famous at Boeing. He's the chief scientist of hypersonics. So you get to take a, a top quality course uh, through the department. Uh, it was 20 hours and you get a certificate of completion by the AIAA. Uh, there's students um, halfway through the course, I asked them, you know, what they think of the course. And, they, and these are the comments uh, that they, they actually, these are quotations of the students. So they all liked it. So I, I figured we're gonna be doing that every year, at least once a semester, excuse me, once a year minimum. And I find a course, it doesn't have to be in hypersonics, but it could be in some unique thing in, in maybe electric cars. I think this is something that's unique to our department with that we, we, we try to make sure that the students get what they want, even outside the department. Let's see, I'm almost there. This is another course that's very interesting at Van Karman Institute in Belgium. I visited there and gave a talk once before. They have very large pieces of equipment also, and they also offer a similar course in hypersonics. Hypersonics is a hot topic, no pun intended. Uh, sometimes in hypersonics, the materials can reach temperatures of 1,000 to 2,000 degrees Celsius. So it's, it's a hot topic. Uh, but there are some uh, different perspectives. The way, uh, I took a short course also at Van Carmen, and their perspective was different than the way things are taught in America. It's very good to see the other side too. Conclusions, my conclusion is always to study hard, enjoy mathematics and physics. They are the foundations of engineering. Math is extremely important in undergraduate and graduate engineering programs. And basically it's a language. And so it's very important to us. Get involved on campus, on, on campus and in the department. Enjoy your stay and uh, think forward and big for your future. And I'll stop there. Let me go to the chat maybe. Okay, see if there's any questions. So if anyone has any questions for Dr. Frankel, please uh, post them in the chat. I, I sort of, I hope that was the, uh, what you meant is mechanical engineering and aerospace and engineering science degrees require more mathematics. And uh, the engineering technology is I think a terminal degree. Uh, um, okay, if you can hear me, do you just want me to respond verbally? and do it that way. Okay, good. Uh, undergraduate opportunities are the best ways to get involved. Well, there are a lot of uh, societies. You know, if, you know, there's the ASME, AIAA in the department. The AIAA is aerospace. The ASME is mechanical, American side of mechanical engineering. Those are two societies. There's a lot of activity. There's a lot of conferences. There's a lot of meetings. There's a lot of competitions. Uh, best, you know, writing papers and things like that. I've taken my, my students uh, to conferences, my undergraduates too. 
And you see the you know, conference, we have 2,000 people in the aerospace industry and they'll have exhibits. So that's one thing you could get involved with. So societies are very important, professional societies. You can become a student member for $50. I have to pay a lot more. If you go to a conference, I have to pay $1,300. Students pay $100. So professors love to take their students because it's cheap. It really is cheap other than the airline. Um, so societies are very important. There's also these activities. Some of them are associated with societies like I showed you before, uh, but so there's a lot of activities as students get together. There's undergraduate research. The way that's done is typically a professor will post something on his door or maybe send an email to all the undergraduates saying that I have this opportunity, please give me your CV if you, if you feel it's appropriate area of interest to you. So there's a lot of things, research, societies, and um, uh, these activities. Does, does that uh, answer your, your question? I, uh, I, yes or no? <laughs> Any other questions? Uh, uh, thank you, appreciate it. The faculty here are very approachable. Okay, I, like I said, I come from a major university uh, on the East, uh, very research oriented and uh, uh, and before that, I was at another university, uh, private university. So the the, um, the faculty are very approachable here. The math, just going back to mathematics, it is very important to to be interested in mathematics. I, I really believe that it is a, a foundation. Like I said, it's a language. You know, when you derive something as physics, and then you have to solve it. That's mathematics. Then the next step is interpretation of your results. So typically when you solve an engineering problem, it's four steps. One is the problem is posed. Two is you set up the physics. Then three is you, you solve it by mathematics. And four is you interpret those results. That, that's the truth for uh, mechanics, thermal sciences, heat transfer, fluid mechanics, it's all basically for basic steps is, is you can look at it that way. So mathematics are very important. And if you notice on the flow charts, if you're, if you're not on track, that mathematics can slow your, your graduation down. So it's really always good to get ahead or try to get ahead, you know, maybe a summer course before you come in or things like that to try to get on track. It's very important. Maybe you could tell me why you want to go into mechanical and aerospace engineering. Turn it around. Is there anybody? I'm curious why. Other than watching the SpaceX explode, uh, <laughs> which is always fun. Uh, no, no questions. I, I'm, I could try. Let me try to think of some. <laughs> um, I, I think you'll find that the uh, what the dean always says is that the university is not too big and not too small, and I think that really really is true. Oh, that's very good. Oh, okay, that's uh, uh, both ME and AE with a minor in EE. That's actually very good because if your son is interested in drones, that's what we call like sort of an interdisciplinary area. Uh, if you look at our faculty, some of them have degrees in electrical engineering, but they're mechanical. So, and drone flies, but yet it's mechanical too. So that all makes sense to me. Uh, it, is your son interested in drones by chance? And if that's the case, that's that, that's the logic behind it. I mean, there's other areas too, but first one comes to my mind is drones. It, you, it's it's certainly. By the way, the uh, minor electrical is very good actually um, in in, in uh, today's environment. And also in aircraft, there's a lot of electrical systems. So again, uh, I can see mechanical and aero and electrical there too. And this, uh, this type of program your son is doing, he can communicate well across the board uh, through the college. And EE is the, uh, also a very large program here. Oh, okay, got it. Yeah, I, I, like I said, my degrees were mechanical, but I have a degree almost in mathematics, and then my master's and PhD were mechanical, but I, I, I did nuclear 
in aerospace and research. <laughs> and the other thing is very interesting, you can actually talk to your son. <laughs> Are, are the students looking at what are the schools are you got, you all looking at besides New Mexico State? Are you looking more out of state or within the state? I'm sort of curious. I mean, also, okay. Okay, I see. Yeah, I mean, the other thing I wanted to mention is that in the state of New Mexico, New Mexico State has the only aerospace, I, I mentioned it earlier, is the only aerospace engineering program. The other ones have aerospace sciences and courses, but in terms of an actual accredited degree, it's only us. What state did, Paige, what state did you come from? Oh, South Carolina, you came across, oh wow, that's nice, that's good, that's good. Yeah, I, I, I left the University of Tennessee to come here, so you're not too far away. Anybody else? Ah, got it. That's actually pretty common, you know, the families stay together like that. And also with COVID, it's a, you know, it's, it's that that is um, people tend to want to stay home, closer to home now. I think this department is, is very strong, um, actually. Uh, again, I came here for several reasons and uh, to be involved in particularly the aerospace too, program too to uh, make it a little bit unique. Thank you. <laughs> there is, seems to be a, a lot of potential for getting um, scholarship money at New Mexico State University. I think, again, going back to the, the word communication is very, very important. And uh, Ms. Lester and others are, are probably good points to, to uh, contact. Uh, to look for scholarships, extra funding, opportunities on campus, et cetera. You know, if you're a senior and want to go to graduate school, there are opportunities, the National Science Foundation to pay your way. There's the Defense Department, there's the Department of Energy. So, you know, there's a, you know, when you, if you decide to stay in school for a, a lengthy, a longer period of time, there's inside money from the department and faculty, but there's also fairly large funding if you can get a National Science Foundation uh, graduate award. That, that is real career builders. I mean, people look at you differently. So most of you are from in-state then? Is that other than, I think it was Paige, most of you are in-state applications? Anybody from out of state? Well, I hope you all have a time to visit the apartment and walk around, you know, uh, it's pretty quiet right now because of COVID, but at some point, um, I do believe there are uh, virtual tours of the various uh, uh, departments and um, uh, Vladimir may want to address that. I'm gonna go ahead and put the link in the chat for the virtual tours. Thank you, Vladimir. Chelsea, is there anything I missed that you wanted to um, either have me touch upon or question the students or the, the potential students to see if they, any other inquiries for, for your office also? All right, everyone, I'm gonna leave my information in the chat. I am the scholarship coordinator. Um, we're doing, um, we're working on the 21-22 scholarships um, right now. So any you know, students in the chat, if you have questions about scholarships or scholar dollars, you can feel free to email me. I will leave my information right here. Well, I appreciate the opportunity to virtually meet you. And um, unfortunately, I guess the technical difficulties, I couldn't hear any things, but it actually worked out okay. Uh, through the chat. I really appreciate it. And uh, Chelsea, thank you for setting this up. Thank Vladimir, thank you for coming along. I, all of you, save the day as usual. <laughs> if there's anything else, you can you can email me or uh, you could you can email me. Let me put my email in there. It's it's pretty obvious. Um, I'm I get a I get a hundred emails a day, so please bear with me. <laughs> 
Thank you. I appreciate it. Um, hope to meet you in reality, uh, in the real, in the three-dimensional reality at some point. Uh, please study hard. Um, I, I think the students here are good and they're very competitive. I think the the faculty are very good also. Again, I haven't had the, I, I meet the faculty now so virtually most of the time, but I, I, I feel very comfortable this is the top school in terms of education. And I think it's going to be a top school in research at some point too. So I think you're going to get the best of both worlds. Uh, I think research and education go hand in hand. Uh, I've, been, I've been a professor for 35 years. Um, this is my third institution I've been associated with. Um, I've, I've worked in National Bureau of Standards, which is now NIST in Washington. I, was a, I worked at, for the uh, was a <laughs> Beltway Bandit for the Defense Department. Uh, and I have a very active research program. So I think that you can make, you can integrate research and education to a point where everybody wins. And that's my, my, my philosophy. So please study hard, enjoy your time at the university. I never left, as you can tell. I, I've been at uh, different campuses, but I've never left the university. So good luck to you all. Thank you.